dreams forevermore. Good morning and welcome to Abundant Living, a casual look into the Word of God with the preaching ministry of Dr. Gary Bradley, minister of the Mayfair Church of Christ, located in Jones Valley in Huntsville. The Mayfair Church is a loving, Christ-centered church with a vision and a dream of sharing Jesus with the Tennessee Valley and the entire world. Every Sunday, Gary touches people's lives with the good news, and now he wants to share it with you one-on-one. So join us for the next few minutes as together we find the solutions to life's problems. Are you searching for those answers this morning? We believe the answers are there in God's Word, and that each of us can have the abundant life God wants to give us. He reigns forever. And now your host, Dr. Gary Bradley. Good morning and welcome to Abundant Living. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. We hope all is well with you and your loved ones. Thank you for watching. Thank you for telling other people about our program on Sunday morning. It's just kind of a time when we can just kind of be quiet and settle down and look at the Word of God. I don't know of a better way to begin any day, especially the Lord's Day. Uh, since we have had so much uh, uh, in, uh, need for us to stay at home, uh, the uh, attendance of people who are viewing our rating has just gone up more than it's ever been. And we're so grateful for that. Thank you for letting me come into your home, wherever you might be. Uh, and I can tell now when I talk about uh, uh, things that we need, like Bibles for Cuba, I get mail from everywhere. And that's what thrills me, not only the contribution that you send in to help us buy Bibles in Cuba, but uh, to know where the listening audience is. And since uh, hopefully when this thing has died down enough and we can start our workshops up again, I will be going over to Florence a number of times. I will be going back to Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Georgia. Right now that's uh, the ones we have rescheduled from last year or the year 2020 when we couldn't go. So be praying for me in that ministry. Right now I'm preaching for the Madison Church of Christ in Madison, Alabama. And I hope if you're in that area, come out and worship with us. We begin at 8.30, uh, first service, and the second service is at 10.30. You'll be more than welcome. And uh, you'll, you'll enjoy meeting these wonderful people out at Madison. And remember the, the Mayfair Church, uh, their services begin at nine, begins at nine o'clock this coming Sunday, and they invite you. We, I invite you to come and uh, be a part of that worship service as well. I pray for the leaders of the church because I'm hearing uh, personally, and then by phone call and emails that our leaders are just really in a quandary as to what to do uh, to keep people safe. And yet, you know, we've been gone a year almost in, in one sense. You know, it's been a year since uh, we have been in our regular schedule. And so we're going to have to really be sincere uh, in, in trying to get back like we were spiritually. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm hoping that the, we'll get jobs, schools will start back, whatever the, the health uh, officials say. But it's important that we get back spiritually. And uh, let's not talk about how, uh, you know, let, let's just, if we, I know we can't, but let's just move on from 2020 and get excited about 2021. And things are looking better. Prayers are being answered. And we're hoping that we'll continue to abide by the rules and regulations of the health people. They're trying to bring this thing to an end. And uh, let's be praying to that end. Uh, I do want to thank you for your generous contributions. Uh, there again, uh, they, I, you know, I open uh, an envelope and it has four dollars in it. That'll buy one Bible, and then I open it had ten dollars and a hundred dollars and ten thousand dollars. So we've gotten a great number of people to participate in this, and you'll get a blessing from it, and then you'll be able to provide a Bible for people who have never had a Bible. And that's, that's, hard to, that's hard to believe, isn't it? 
And when I, I told you last time, I, I have so many Bibles, I don't know what to do with old Bibles. I'm not going to throw them away, and I, I, we just store them because I have notes in them. I have sermons written on the on the white pages in the Bible, and so we have our we have the Word of God. But then we're in a country 90 miles off our coast. That's most of them have never seen a Bible because they were taught something else and not the Word of God, and so help. Uh, thank you for your help. Thank you for your generosity, and uh, I want to respond to every one of you, but that would be a very difficult, I wouldn't do much else if I did that because we've had so many. All right, one more time, power for today. We, have 50, we had 50 calls last week, and so uh, we have, we, well, just to be perfectly honest, we've got 50 more. So when these are gone, these are gone. So this is powerful today. For those that, that may not know, it's April, May, and June. It's kind of a, devotion, a daily devotional, and it is so very helpful. It just kind of slows you down and, and enables you to read a passage from God's Word and then a comment about a, just an ordinary person that's a Christian. And uh, they usually say what that verse or those verses mean to them. And then there's a song that's suggested and a prayer. Uh, the reason I have done this for so many years is because I don't know of anything any better. I know there are a lot of devotional books, and, and they are helpful to read and beneficial, but this just kind of gets us in the mood of with our family or even individually. And that is reading the Bible, reading what somebody, what it means to somebody else, and a song and then a, a prayer. So you can, you can spend some quality time in five minutes uh, by regularly going through April, May, and June with this uh, that will direct you to the Word of God. And of course, there's our free Bible correspondence course. You can also enroll when you call and ask for your power for today, and you haven't enrolled in our Bible study then this will give you an opportunity to do that. So be sure to or go online, and you can register there as well. Thank you so much for your cooperation. It's just uh, kind of like my second family. And I need to say that when you come and attend the Mayfair Church, Jason Bible will be preaching, and he's preaching from the book of Isaiah, and you'll enjoy what he has to say about God's Word and the worship service that's conducted there. Last time we talked about ways, the reason we love the Bible. And uh, one of the reasons, I don't know if you remember all of them, but one of them was the Word of God is so comforting. I mean, who would not be comforted by the Lord is my shepherd? He's speaking in the first person, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. And so who wouldn't be comforted by Matthew eleven twenty eight? 28? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. There's some more scriptures that are comforting. In fact, the whole book of 2 Corinthians is written with the idea of comforting the brethren. Let me let me read a, a verse to you that explains very Second Corinthians. If you have a Bible or if you have a phone and you have a, a Bible on it, turn to Second Corinthians. Uh, right now, I'm in the first chapter because I want you to look at two words. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. Now, this is his second letter, uh, and he is thanking them for the corrections that they made regarding the sinfulness of the first letter uh, that talks about the condition they were in. And so he's saying uh, in this second letter, the word comfort is found 29 times in 2 Corinthians. And so if you're in need of some special guidance, I, you know, I, I, I quote all the time, James 1, 5, if any man lack wisdom, Wisdom is the ability to do things God's way. And uh, I, have, I have kind of a choice of either doing it my way or doing it God's way. 
And so when we, when we think about comfort, and I usually say this, that, you know, the Word of God can comfort us when everybody else has gone home. The Word of God will be there when everybody else has left. And oftentimes, uh, I, I don't know, over the years, I don't know how, how many times I've found myself not knowing what to say. And I, and I believe very strongly, you know, just being there is enough, especially in a difficult situation. And in the, in the last uh, 12 months, we've had unbelievable situations where uh, we, we didn't know what to say, but we were there. And we kept our distance, of course, and couldn't hold and, and, and hug each other like we usually do. But the Bible always knows what to say. Peter says he's given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. And that's doing things in God's way. So listen now he begins this letter of comfort to a very, very troubled church. But he still calls them brethren and tells them to be faithful and to act like men and to stand fast in the faith. And then he begins the second letter, chapter 1, verse 3, Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion. The Father. When you think about the Father of our nation, the Father of, of the original person, the one that started it all, the one who's responsible for everything, the Father of all compassion. Now, you know, if you've been watching the program any length of time, that my definition of compassion is very simple. It's your pain in my heart. Your pain in my heart. And there's been so much pain in the last 12 months. We've never seen anything like it. And so, compassion is probably... You know, if you were to begin, and I'm sure I've said this before, if you, if you begin in Matthew and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and have a yellow pen with you and underline every time it says, and Jesus had compassion, that's it. You always act when you have compassion. You, you do something because you feel that pain and other people's pain in your heart. Now, may the Lord help us that we never get to the point where we don't have any compassion. I can't think of anything any, any worse. That a person would be so selfish and so self-centered that other people's predicament and difficulty doesn't affect them. It doesn't bother them. Our hearts ought to break when bad things happen, like it did this past week. Uh, another shooting, and 10 people lost their life, including a law enforcement officer. And so when, when we think about what we really need, we need compassion. And He's the Father of compassion. And here's our word, and the God of all comfort, the God, the Father of compassion, the God of comfort. Now, the word comfort in the original means to move up beside them, to come up alongside. We would say to put their arm around them, to, to put their head on our shoulder, to, to be there, just like in Philippians 4, 4, it says the Lord is at hand. That means He's right here. And so the word comfort means you pull up alongside them. And you can do that in a number of ways. And, and one of the main ways is by listening. By listening to what their pain really is. You know why people leave the church? They leave the church because they're in pain and they cry out for help and nobody hears them. That's the sad part. And so when we talk about compassion, we talk about what happens to us when we see what happens to others. When we talk about comfort, we talk about doing something. The God of all comfort. That's an action word. 
And as I said, it's used 29 times in this one book. In this one book of 2 Corinthians, he constantly talks about comfort. God will comfort you. You know, some people won't be comforted, unfortunately. Some people won't let other people comfort them. And that's so sad. And I don't know what we'll do, what it would take to change that. But nevertheless, he's the God of all comfort. Now, let me just briefly go on. Who comforts you in all of your troubles? Really? Paul, what are you telling me? Are you telling me that the Lord knows what I go through? Exactly. That's exactly what he's saying. Who comforts you in all of your troubles? Well, obviously, he is very familiar with troubles. Uh, Isaiah 53 said he's a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And so he knows, that's the reason the Hebrew writer says we have a perfect high priest because he's been touched by all the feelings of our infirmities yet without sin. So he's the God of all comfort and he comforts us in our troubles. Now look at this, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. Wow. What's he saying there? He's saying, okay, he's the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. And he comforts you so that you in turn can pull up alongside someone else and comfort them with the same comfort that you have received from God. That's the way he begins this marvelous letter. And I love it. Now turn to the fourth chapter. Well, really the fifth chapter, because we're going to look at some things that motivated Paul in his work to write, of course, by the Holy Spirit, write the things that the brethren at Corinth needed so badly. First of all, in chapter 4, I love it, in chapter 4, he says, don't lose heart. He says that in the first verse, and and then in the 16th verse, he says, don't lose heart. What does it mean to lose heart? You give up. You just quit. You quit trying. And, And that is so unfortunate. I wonder especially in the churches of Christ, if everybody somehow we could reach who have left and if they would come back, I wonder how many people that would be. Back to that statement I made about why people leave the church. They leave for a number of reasons, but one of them is they cried for help and nobody heard them. And so Paul says twice in one chapter, don't lose heart. Don't lose heart about the minister of Christ. Don't lose heart here when he says, though outwardly we were wasting away. You believe that? Look in the mirror, okay? Outwardly we're wasting away, but inwardly we're being renewed day by day. Isn't that a comfort? Uh, That if if we put all of our interest in the physical, all of our, we're only concerned about the physical and neglect the spiritual. The physical is going to waste away. The spiritual is going to live forever. And that's what he's saying in this great verse. And then he talked about his light afflictions, which are but for the moment so that we fix our eyes on what is seen, but on what is, uh, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporal, and what is not seen is eternal. We haven't seen God, but we know He's there. And so then He begins, this is one of those places where there shouldn't be a break there shouldn't be a break in the chapter, but men decided to do this and hundreds of years later after the Bible was written. It's okay, but the same thought continues. Don't let a break in the chapters uh, uh, cause you to lose the thought. He says, now, now we know that if the earthly tent 
this translation says, we live and is destroyed. We have a building from God, a, an eternal house in heaven, but not made with human hands. What I want to share with you this morning is some of the outstanding statements in this fifth, in this fifth chapter. I want you to look at verse 9 because he goes on to say, when I'm in the body, I'm absent from the Lord. He's talking about spiritually, and he's talking about the, the motivation he has to do what he's able to accomplish. He's a, you know, he wrote 20, you know, uh, for, if he wrote the book of Hebrews, and that's a, a question, uh, giving him the book of Hebrews as 14 books that he wrote to preachers and to congregations to try to get them to mature in Christ. First of all, to be in Christ, and then to grow in Christ. And so, look at verse 9. He says there, so we make it our goal to please Him. Number one. That's kind of a concluding verse after all of these things he said about outwardly we're, we're wasting away, inwardly we're being renewed day by day. How do you do that? By staying close to God, by staying in His Word, by talking to Him in prayer, listening to Him in the Word of God. So we're wasting away physically, but inwardly we're getting stronger and stronger. And then he says, we make it our goal to please Him. Paul said over in, uh, let me get over in Galatians because it is a very, very strong verse when he talks about, but even if we, if we are an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than that which we preached unto you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, now, so now I say again, in other words, for emphasis, this is a double emphasis here. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Then in verse 10, listen, am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Paul said, my goal is to please God. What is your goal? What is my goal? Is my goal to make everybody happy? Is my goal to make everybody miserable? Is my goal to be rich? I, I think back to that statement I just made so many, well, what do you want your kids and grandkids? Well, I don't care if they, I just want them to be happy. Well, there's the world, there's the happiness of the world, and then there's the happiness in the Scriptures. And that were like the word blessed in the Beatitudes, that in the original is happy, but the word happy means blessed many times over. Blessed many times over. So blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly in Psalms 100. You know, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so he said, am I trying to win the approval of men or of God? Now he's not through. Or am I trying to please men? Well, now there's a hook hidden here, and here it is. If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of God. Whoa. He, he just talked about if anybody preaches another gospel other than what's in this book, let him be eternally separated. One version says, one, one translation is anathema. That is a permanent separation from God toward those who preach false. Now, anything that's not God is false. And so he says here, am I still trying to please men? When did he do that? When he was a Pharisee. He was probably headed for the Sanhedrin, which is the highest uh, position one could hold back then. That's like the Supreme Court. And he was killing 
this, these rebel rousers from Nazareth, this follower of the so-called Jesus the Christ who claimed to be the Messiah. What are you doing? I'm pleasing men. But on the road to Damascus and following his stay there, when Ananias got to him, he said, Now why do you tarry? What are you waiting on? You've already found out that what you're doing to these men and women and children is the body of Christ. It's the church of, of the Lord. It's the church of Christ. It's the, it's the body and, and, the, and, the, and the kingdom of the Lord. And he asked him, Now why are you tarrying? Arise, be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And thankfully he did. And so, goal number one, Paul says, I will, my goal is to please God. Well, as usual, our time just slips away. And I'm, I will, Lord willing, pick up right here next Lord's Day. But I want you to continue to read. And if you'll read the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians, then you'll be ready for our discussion next week. I hope you have a good week. I hope you have a safe week. I hope that we continue to obey the rules of the health uh, people in the health world th that uh, are helping us to try to avoid this terrible thing that soon will be over, I hope and pray. And enjoy being with you this morning, and I look forward to next week. May God bless you is our prayer. Abundant Living, a ministry of the Mayfair Church of Christ. A place where children are loved, where families are strengthened, where teens learn to serve, and grandparents are special. Mayfair, truly a family place for all ages. The Mayfair Church of Christ, we're saving a special place for you. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord.